Afternoon, everyone. Pastor Gitro here with Pastor Steve, and we're so happy we get a chance to talk to you uh, this afternoon. We've been di diving deeper into our Lenten sermons each Wednesday uh, this, this uh, Lenten season. We've been coming together to try to dig a little bit deeper and to uh, share some questions and some insights of the messages that we've been sharing so that you all might go a little deeper in your faith. We want to equip you to live your life in faith on purpose. So we welcome your questions and comments during this time together. And if we can't respond uh, while, while we're here and live, we'll certainly get back to you uh, after the fact. So this past Sunday, Pastor Steve and I both had the opportunity to preach on a text from Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. Steve, could you read that for us today? Sure. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord, but this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days. This is what the Lord says, I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. The Lord says, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. So this week, the main theme of my sermon was the law is in our minds and our hearts. Then we're supposed to live that law. And when Jesus came, because we both took this text from Jeremiah, but we're applying it to what Jesus taught us. And Jesus said that we are to love one another as he has loved us. Yeah, thanks, Steve. It's such a powerful passage, isn't it? It's, um, it was really uh, quite, quite different from what the Israelites had heard before, you know, this concept of moving the law, instead of it being written on tablets of stone, it would be written on our hearts, right? That just moves me every time I hear that, um, to hear that God would put God's law on our hearts. So the main idea that I tried to uh, cover in my sermon this past Sunday was that God helped us to move from having to keep God's rule to having to keep God's rule to wanting to keep God's rule, right? Because we, we do better at following rules when they're rules that we want to keep. And so how did God do that? God did that through a change of heart. And that change of heart comes to the life of the believer through their relationship with Jesus. That was kind of the thrust of my message. So it's great right. that we were both able to take <laughs> this, this Old Testament passage and to um, see how it revealed to us and foretold what Jesus would do when he came into the right. world, right? All right, so I've got a question for you, Steve, and listening to your message, so great to hear you preach. So in the beginning of your message, you mentioned some crazy laws that are still on record. For those of you who might have missed it, there's a law in, what was it, Connecticut? Yes. Where people aren't to um, walk on, walk across the street on, what was that? On their hands. On their in hands. other words, you can't do a handstand and walk across the street. Why? <laughs> That's an issue I don't know, unless right? it's too much of a distractor. <laughs> right. Uh, Isn't that I love I love the law. Uh, somewhere in Florida, now I'm glad it's, they're, it's not allowed on Sunday, but they said single women were not allowed to parachute on Sunday afternoons. Uh, <laughs> any other day of the week is okay? <laughs> any other day, just Sunday afternoons. Uh, okay. Of course, the one I loved because it especially applies to Jason and myself is that there is a place in West Virginia that... From the pulpit, clergy, pastors cannot tell jokes or humorous stories. <laughs> I got nothing left then, you know. Right, right. <laughs> I'm done. Um, it's interesting to consider what happened to bring these laws into being, right? Isn't it? And that's the exact point. If something happened that somebody got offended and they belonged to city council or whatever yeah. and pushed the law through. Right, right. 
Well, I've got a question for you, and not everybody that's watching us today and watching this video knows this, but as a former police officer, I wonder, what does law mean to you? Well, I spent 27 years as a sworn law enforcement officer, and total experience, because I also worked at uh, a police academy and training officers. So obviously law is very important to me. I believe in it. Uh, I refer to myself sometimes as a fairness freak because I believe in equality. Everybody is equal under the law, despite what the law sometimes does. And not so much as an enforcement type of thing. It has nothing to do with the weight of the badge or anything, but it has to do with making sure people are protected. People get treated fairly. People get treated with respect. Mm -hmm. And you look at the news now and it breaks my heart sometimes when I see where a profession I loved is falling in great disrespect. Um, there's still some good, we see some good news stories, we do. but I, I think law, I mean, God gave the Israelites law to help keep the society within certain parameters. Sure. Uh, Ten Commandments. I mean, some of those are still our laws. Don't steal, rob, kill, all those things are important and they Civil are important. Civil and religious, right? <laughs> uh, that, uh, <laughs> yeah. Some of them haven't changed. Uh, right. God's laws became man's laws. So. Right. Right. Thank you for sharing that perspective. I appreciate that. Um, we each come from our different contexts, right? And it's nice to hear law thought of in a, in a good way, in a respectful way, in a way that it, where it's meant to bring out the, the best of us, right? Right. Um, to be uh, empowering instead of uh, restrictive. Right. So, so what does God's law mean to you? God's law just takes it a little bit further. It's another step. In other words, some things may be legal to do, but they're not nice, they're not right. And this gets back into the respect of what we are to do. And Jesus says we are to love people as he loved us. And obviously not everybody loves each other as they should right now. That's one of the problems I think we have in this country is we have lost respect for each other. And God places this on our hearts and on our minds. And these people have to know what they are doing is not right. Now, I can't be worried about them. I got to do what is right. But uh, God puts these laws in our minds, in our hearts, on what we are to do, which is we are to love everyone. Don't always have to like them, but we have to love them. We have to respect them. Um, and, you know, that's sometimes I get the question, how can you go from a cop to being a preacher? Hmm. It's very easy. If, if your heart is in the right place, it's what God calls us to do. Uh, my belief is God called me to be a police officer to train me for what I'm doing now, hmm. to understand people and relationships. Uh, I think it's key. It's a, you know, it's an outgrowth of that love for other, yes. right? That you're able to live into it in a way, being a pastor that, of course, you wouldn't be able to, being a, being a police officer. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. It's Little like change. More of that. Right. Um, this is always curious to me, but in Jeremiah, he tells us that God, he's put it on our minds and on our hearts. Well, it, it begs to differ that it's there, but we have people who are not exposed to Jesus. Hmm. Uh, to us, they're not exposed to God. I mean, you had the American Indians. You still have Indians in uh, South America who don't see anything outside of their culture. How does that work? Indigenous peoples, right? Yes. All, all over the world. Um, I, that's a great question. I. I would say my, my Methodist pastor answer is to say that, you know, we believe that God's grace is extended to all people, you know, for God so loved all the world, right? That God made himself known um, to each person, regardless of where they are. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, do an immersion experience while I was at Wesley Seminary. And um, 
travel to a, a Indian reservation, Native American reservation in South Dakota, the Oglala Sioux Reservation. And while I was there, we spoke a lot about God. Now, their understanding of God wasn't the same as mine, but while we used different words, we used different concepts, there was definitely an understanding that these people knew and experienced the divine, you know, in their own way, that, that there was a, a beautiful relationship between, um, between them and their creator, although it was, again, in a different, framed in a different way than, than my own upbringing, mm -hmm. than my own experience. And so I, I think, you know, God is, is written in the stars. God is in, you know, in the rocks of the earth, in the trees, in creation all around us, right? The, the world sings of God. And so we can know God in different ways, even if we haven't been experienced to the actual Bible, right? Um, but that's, that's where I would take that, you know, that God's love is known to all people. Yeah. All right. Well, now it's time to turn it back to you. <laughs> so God's law isn't just about what we don't do. It's also a call to action. So what are we called to do with God's law? Well, like I say, Jesus taught that his commandment was that we are to love others as he loved us. Um, Jesus loved everyone, even his enemies. Uh, Jesus uh, may have given them a hard time verbally now and again, but trying to change their hearts. Uh, with some of the Pharisees and some of the questions he was asked, he was just pushing back that you claim to be a priest or whatever from God, and yet you don't understand God's word, and you're doing things that you're missing the point of the law. In other words, God created these laws, and it's from here. And when we obey God's law, especially as Jesus taught us, how do we treat each other? And again, there's so many beautiful examples during this pandemic of what people are doing for people. It's amazing. It is, it is. And then we still have the other side, but I think, you know, we gotta push the negativity aside sometimes and look at what's working, looking at how people are loving each other these food banks and everything that people have set up, sure. they are showing God's love. So what empowers us to show God's love to others? Well, we don't have a whole lot of time to go into the Trinity, but <laughs> I, I honestly believe that it is the Holy Spirit that God placed in us, that Jesus promised us. Mm -hmm. Again, it puts what he wrote in our heart and mind to move us through. Uh, you know as well as I do, when you've done mission trips and everything else, um, I always feel that I have gotten far more out of it sure. than whoever I have served because uh, it feels good to actually be able to do for other people. And, and the key here is that we have to listen for the Spirit mm -hmm. and quit putting up our excuses, our barriers. Of, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. Because I don't know how many times it's happened to you, but now I'm too tired. I don't want to do this. And I go, and it's the best time I've ever had. Yeah. It's truly meaningful because of what was accomplished. And not by me. I'm just a vessel, but from above. Sure thing. You know, the last part of this scripture, though, we're, we're talking about the change of the law. But we get into... God says he will forgive us uh, and then remember it no more. Um, how does this forgiveness work? Because I, when you and I were talking earlier, I can think of things, and I know God has forgiven me for sins I've done, and yet it still pops up in my mind now and again. And these aren't horrible things, but things I still feel bad about that yeah, I was in person. How can I do that? So how, how do we move through this? Sure. Well, I think we're kind of running out of time here, but just to try to, to answer that really quickly. So my understanding is that um, the way 
sin, what sin does is it breaks down our relationship with God and with one another. And when we recognize our sin and we want to change our ways, we repent and we seek God's forgiveness. And thanks be to God, through Jesus, we have that forgiveness. But then it's not necessarily the end of the story right there, right? I mean, we have this, we still have this broken relationship between God or with others. And so what grows out of forgiveness or God's pardon is a move towards penance and reconciliation. Now, not penance in terms of something that's meant to be, um, you know, like rote or, or, um, or unlife-giving, but penance as a move towards a reconciliation with whatever relationship's been broken. And I think sometimes if, if we're still remembering things that, that we know we've um, repented for and we've received God's forgiveness for, it could be because we haven't completed that step. There's still some move towards reconciliation uh, with God or with someone else that's still troubling our spirits. I mean, that's, we talk about the Holy Spirit empowering us to do, to love one another, right? And to serve others. It's also the Holy Spirit that moves us towards healing those relationships that might have gotten broken. Thank you. Sure thing. Well, do we have any questions from the audience that we, okay, yeah. So thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Um, I know I've appreciated this time to, to, to talk shop here with, with Pastor Steve and so appreciate you all tuning on, tuning in with us. Um, check us out on YouTube, check us out on our website and share us on Facebook. We appreciate that. And just want to also invite you to tune in to our Holy Week services coming up. So we've got Palm Sunday, 9 a.m. and 10.30. Uh, we've got a Monday, Thursday service at 7 o'clock, Good Friday at 7 o'clock. And also, of course, Easter morning we'll be worshiping live stream at 9 and 10.30. So glad you could join us. Continue to walk with God this Lenten season. I think Steve will close us now in a prayer. Our Heavenly Father. We thank you for this opportunity to talk about your word. And from the prophet of old, who foretold the future that God has written his law in our hearts and minds, and that we know God in our hearts, whether we've been exposed or not, it's there. And God asks us to use what he has written in our heart to love one another. So especially during Lent, let us love one another and do as Jesus requested of us. Amen. Amen.